I found this video in which Frank Turek answers questions from an atheist, but the questions the guy poses are so clumsily formed and lead into so many of the most common apologist talking points that it makes me suspect he's really a Christian pretending to be an atheist just to throw Turek a bunch of softballs. Who designed God? And if no one designed God, if God is timeless, spaceless, and immaterial, and he existed eternally in an uncaused fashion, then why can't nature exist in the exact same way, in an eternal, uncaused, faceless, timeless, immaterial fashion. Why can't our uncaused origins be as marvelous and precise as God, but be natural causes? Also in this video, Turek gives some of his most bizarre arguments. But I'll, I'll give it to you very briefly in an acronym, SURGE, S-U-R-G-E. S stands for the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the universe is running down. Well, if it's running down, somebody must have wound it up. Somebody? Really? It couldn't have been something? Of course we don't know exactly why the universe has low entropy in earlier times and higher entropy at later times, but why must we assume that the explanation for this can't be natural? I don't really see why the explanation can't be some factor inherent to the universe rather than something which imposed it upon the universe from outside. We'd have no energy left right now if the universe was eternal. The U stands for the fact that the universe is expanding. Edwin Hubble d detected that back in 1929. Why is expansion represented by a U? And shows that everything came from a single point. A point actually of infinite density, the singularity, which is actually nothing. How the fuck is a singularity of infinite density nothing? Maybe he gets this idea from Lawrence Krauss, who I think has some very funny ideas about what nothing is. Also, it makes no sense to speak of a singularity as a beginning, because the very notion of time breaks down at the Planck scale, the smallest possible unit of time. So it doesn't mean anything to use temporal words like beginning when speaking of this phenomenon. So the universe had a beginning. The R in surge stands for the radiation afterglow. That's the remnant heat discovered by Penzias and Wilson in 1965, which is literally the smoking gun to the Big Bang. There's heat, remnant heat from the Big Bang still out there, which shows that the universe had a beginning. No, the Big Bang does not show the universe had a beginning. It shows that the universe is likely finite in the past, but this is not the same thing as a beginning. The G in surge stands for the great galaxy seeds, which were very fine temperature variations in that radiation afterglow that allowed the galaxies to form in the early universe. I suspect this is some kind of fine-tuning argument. The problem with all fine-tuning arguments is that we haven't ruled out some natural cause of the universe's seemingly very precise conditions. We don't know exactly why they are the way they are as opposed to some other way, but it also hasn't been demonstrated that these conditions are free to vary. And even if they were free to vary, the seemingly astronomical odds against the universe becoming the way it is by chance still makes more sense than saying that it was made this way by a timeless, spaceless, disembodied mind with magical powers for the purpose of our existence. And the E stands for Einstein's theory of general relativity, which shows that time, space, and matter are co-relative, that they came into existence together. The fact that time, space, and matter are interrelated does not mean that they came into existence together, because it doesn't prove that they came into existence at all. Saying they came into existence implies that there was a time that they didn't exist, which is not the case. The evidence points to the fact that the universe is not the uncaused first cause. So there must be something beyond the universe that is, and that thing that's beyond the universe must be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. Which is entirely incoherent. What does it even mean to say that something exists without time, space, or matter? Space and time seem to be the prerequisites for existence. I don't know how to think of something existing without thinking of it as existing in some place and for some period of time. And if you're timeless, do you have a beginning? If a thing's existence is timeless, not only does its existence not have a beginning, it also doesn't have a middle or an end. In other in other words, saying that a thing exists timelessly means exactly the same as saying that it never exists. Another reason for the existence of everything might simply be that other dimensions have the power for, and the marvelousness and complexity to create a situation where existence could, where the Big Bang could be brought into existence and space, time, and matter could begin to exist without an intelligent designer having a hand. Well, Carter, what you just described there is what we would call God. So, God is another dimension? God is in another dimension that has the ability to bring these dimensions into existence. So, if you want to call it another dimension, you can call it that. But that's exactly what we mean by God.
If God is another dimension, then how is it that a dimension can issue commandments? How can a dimension have all of the emotions that the Bible says God experiences? A dimension is not an intelligent being with free will. The only thing it has in common with the God described by apologists is that it created the universe. Does Turek even know what the fuck he's saying here? But then why is there a theology? Why do we worship God? He could easily be called another... Excellent point. You don't have to worship God. That wasn't the question. He didn't ask, why must we worship God? He asked, why do we? What the fuck is the point of worshiping another dimension? If Turek really believes that another dimension is exactly what we mean by God, rather than God being the intelligent, disembodied person who loves us that is described by the Bible, why does Turek worship this weird dimension god. P.S. Frank Zindler from American Atheists has a channel now, so check that out. I've put a link in the description.